God damn, Gary. Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Huzzah! I learned a long time ago that there's no sense getting all riled up every time a bunch of idiots give you a hard time. In the end, the universe tends to unfold as it should. Plus, I have a really large penis. That keeps me happy. So long, gay boys! It's been boring! Woke! Woke! Now, what it got here is a scrotum and nothing else. You look goofy. <laughs> Nerdrotic.com Turn on the audio, Gary. <laughs> I forgot the audio at the beginning of that. Meta PC commercial. Meta PCs. Link below. Cool dudes. Cool dudes. They don't care what we say. They don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, neither does Geek Grand Coffee. Uh, this is the Nerd Roddick Nooner, and it is hump day. Yeah. Hope, hope you all got your nooners and your humps in. But the day's not over yet. You know, you can still do that. You can self-hump if you want to. We don't judge here. We don't judge. Uh, <laughs> Self-coupling, is that what it's called? Uh, lots to talk about today. <laughs> um, not self-coupling. Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of self-coupling going on in Hollywood, or is it a circle jerk? I'm not really sure. Um, a little bit of both. <laughs> Sweet Baby Inc. has been exposed. We talked about it yesterday on The Real BBC, but there's another video that's gone completely viral that is just uh, one of the best mask-off moments. And listen, it's all stuff we know. It's just... Much different when we hear it directly. And by the way, this stuff has been out there for years. It's been on their websites. They've made no secret of it at all. Uh, but, you know, yet they want to keep it secret. And they get upset when it's exposed. That's what's fun about it. That's the fun part. That is. Uh, and, uh, of course, we covered the Major League Baseball, the, the show video game yesterday, which was hilarious, dude. I love that game. I love that. It's it's. It's a really fun, like. Are you gonna Are you gonna play as a girl? No, I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> I have like versions of it from years back. That's the thing about those sports games; they tend to be cheap when you buy them used. But no, I love the show because it was like watching a baseball game. The it was the way that they presented the gameplay, and I love that game. What you, What you showed was so ridiculous. Um, they also have a mode, by the way, where you can play the Negro Leagues. That, that's 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 fine. I I don't but have a problem with that. History. That's, that's real. real. That's freaking yeah. real, and you'd get a good game out of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, that's real. So uh, if yeah. I played Gollum or Witcher Three, I'm going off just games I played uh, or Diablo. That I believe has a more chance of being real than women playing baseball. Okay, <laughs> I think a giant devil in a dungeon <laughs> is more real than women playing baseball. That's all. Look, verisimilitude. Look like, <laughs> but if they don't look like Sydney Sweeney, I'm not sure I care. They will probably look like women who play softball, which would make a lot of sense. You know, they're built like linebackers. You know. Oh. 
The women who play softball, Gary. Yes, the lesbians. I've never. Yeah, that's what I was leading to. <laughs> Just that's say the lesbians. Sorry, yeah. I saw F's in the chat. Uh, Why? <laughs> I don't know. I was like, the stream's <laughs> fine, but it must have been something I said. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but we're also going to, hey, uh, F's in the chat for some Disney projects that were quietly canceled. We don't know which ones, uh, but apparently they weren't good enough. We'll get into it. We'll get into Ooh. it. We'll talk yeah. about it. Uh, because that was part of every time Bob Iger opens his pie hole, it just makes things worse. And God, I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. Also, Kristen Dunst, uh, who was a dunce, uh, said something really stupid. I know. Totally shocking. Surprise. Totally shocking. And then, and then in a little bit, we have a little cartoon to premiere for you. <sighs> little cartoon. So excited for the cartoon. Chris Gore, how the hell are you? I'm doing good, man. Gary, always look forward to this. X-Ray girl, love to see you and hear you when you're sick. Um, oh, wow. That <laughs> raspy you... voice. It's a, it's a cool Everyone voice. Everyone loves it, though. Like, the sick voice on anyone, it usually sounds more um, sultry. Sultry. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's sultry. It's weird, because when I'm sick, I don't feel sultry. Or, I don't but know, maybe don't other feel people it. do. Sound no. it. Yeah, maybe. I know. <laughs> But can I can I can I just relate a story just to get this off my chest? I went to get my hair cut last week. I've been getting my hair cut from this guy Wolfgang for years. <laughs> Love the name, by the way. Wolfgang. Wolfgang. Wolfgang Does he make straight? it silky smooth? Oh, so okay, real quick before you get started. Before you get started, straight yes. hairdressers get more tail than any rock star who ever lived. Just Dude. just want to point that out. They're like the kings of their own little fiefdom. Uh, I've seen it. He's a pussy hound. That's yeah. let's you're you're 100 wow. correct, Gary. He, so he's a straight hairdresser. Women love him. He works at a place where it's all women. I go in, and I'm like, I'm going to the Salvation Army to drop off a bunch of stuff. No, Goodwill Salvation Army, one of those. And I had like a big bag of like nerd shirts because I just get a lot of stuff. And I'm like, hey, Wolfgang, do you want some of these shirts or hats? I'd like Star Trek hats, and I just get I have too much stuff. I'm trying to do a purge. And I say, yeah, oh, here, check this out. I'm going to be taking this to Goodwill. And all the women at this place where I'm getting my hair cut say, no, don't go to Goodwill. They treat their employees badly. I'm like, well, well, okay, I'll take it to Salvation Army. And they're like, no, don't take it there. They hate the gays. And I'm like, I'm just trying to give my stuff. I felt like that I reminds was- reminds me, the- I have to don't, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, I was in the real world of Twitter. It was like I was Twitter. I was born in a just- Salvation Army, by the way. That's no joke. Really? Yes. Oh, for real? Yes. Oh, my God. Salvation Army had uh, hospitals called Booth Memorial Hospital, which was for unwed mothers. And I was born in one of those. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. I, wow. I thought you legit just was born on the floor of a Salvation Army. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. I thought Mon Pondered Roddick just found you in a spaceship in a field or something. Well, I don't know. Like origin. My birth, um, my birth, no, just- my birth mom might have come from another planet. She's cool as hell, but she's, <laughs> she's, she's a, but it was just a weird experience because I felt like, oh, this is like when people pile on on Twitter because you're not doing the right thing and they're trying to concern, you know, mess with you and whatever. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to give my clothes away to an organization that can resell them cheap and or donate. I just try to donate stuff, and I'm hit with this hassle that I'm not doing it right. And I got, I was so, it just, it just really irked me. And I was just so, like, Ugh. I have a question. Were they yes. younger or were they kind of what age group? Because I find the younger generation. Were they white women? Like that. Were they white they women? Were all freaking white women. Yes, exactly. So uh, that's, yeah. So donate to Salvation Army because they actually do a lot of good work helping recovering alcoholics and homeless people. Uh, yeah. And goodwill. This is goodwill. Uh, do they treat their employees great? I, it's a goodwill. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't really know. St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, that's where I did it in San Francisco. It's a good place to donate to. You know who treats their employees great is Panera Bread in California. Oh, so, oh, so, yeah. oh, really? oh, you, oh, you mean Gavin Newsom's buddy who owns, yeah. uh, who's the largest franchise owner in the world, who owns Taco Bells and uh, Arby's and Applebee's and Panera Bread, who somehow got around the a minimum wage hike in California because he knew 
Gavin Newsom and sells bread on a shelf, which makes it not fast food. That guy? Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Panera Bread sucks, it's by so, the way. It's fucking terrible. It's so weird because, like, these kinds of things used to be scandals. Like, oh, my God, there's a scandal. A governor of a state was bribed into giving a favor to someone who gave him money. To me, it's like it's all in the open. Like, it's just right there for you to see. It's a story even on the local TV news, and there's zero outrage. Oh, if it's a Republican, it. they're all over it like freaking flies on shit. If it's Gavin, they're they're going to leave. And, like, uh, do I even blame Gavin's friend for doing that? Not really. I mean, yeah, no. for I, for being Gavin's friend, that's bad enough. Uh, but uh, Gavin, uh, I almost said Gavin McGinnis. Gavin Newsom. <laughs> <laughs> Very different Gavins. <laughs> <laughs> they might have a similar size pee pee, but uh, you know, that's about it. <laughs> uh, Gavin Newsom's a piece of shit. There he is. That's yeah. it. Bottom line, he's yeah. a piece of crap. He's a he's a yeah. he's an auton for the state. He's this uh, little fucking robot that uh, the powers that be can control quite easily. And he's got a lot of people fooled in California, even though there's another recall. I mean, do it. I'd say do it, go for it, but with mail in ballots, it'll never win. No, no, it's not, it's no. not, it, it sucks. But to me, like he is literally an AI generated politician, right? Yes. Make a politician and he is just a tool and he stands for nothing. He stands for only what the donors tell him to stand for. And I think that I, I we're just done, we're done with politicians like that. We're just done. Don't, F them. Don't you love him. like he? Did the most harm to Disney by shutting Disneyland down for what is it? Oh, a year and a half. Disneyland was shut down for like a year and a half. Some ridiculous yeah. amount. Of, they were able to reopen with a limited capacity at some point. I'm I'm not remembering, but the, he did the most damage to Disney. Still backed this dude up. Uh, Ron yeah. Ron DeSantis. However you feel about him, they were open. Disney World was open earlier. Uh, and that was their only cash flow for a little while because theaters were closed. Gavin uh, Gavin Newsom also. Uh, your your friend Wolfgang wasn't allowed to work. He was a non-essential employee. My wife was non-essential. Yeah. Gyms were non-essential. Well, but fast food, Panera Breads could stay open. Oh, and Hollywood. Hollywood was allowed to work through it. All through it. While they were like well, saying, stay at home. They were all pro-lockdown because they were able to work through it. Well, I Let's might have that. gone to Wolf Wolfgang's place and just paid him cash. That may have happened. Yeah, there was a lot of speakeasy hairdressers going on. Yeah, we'll say. yeah, because f this, I ugh. man. Yep. Let's what not forget say? that. Let's not forget that. Uh, let's start with uh, since we're talking about all you know, just the repercussions of uh, a bad uh, response to the coup and the government just completely. Con continually fucking people over uh let's 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 talk about how extortion because this is what this is so uh and we've said this for many many years that this whole uh basically this dei stuff which has been around for a while like uh the bbc introduced it in 2012 right so these policies were in some places there prior to that, I would say mostly in Silicon Valley, but as far as the big corporations, studios, media, I'd say around 2013, 14, 15, it started creeping its way in. It is now law. It has now become policy. Sweet baby Inc. We've talked about them a lot. They are just one facet of this. <clears throat> yep. With an arrogant CEO that went out and ran, ran her fucking mouth. And now, now she's paying the price. Now she's paying the price. And it was just, it's hubris. They thought they can get away with this shit. And quite frankly, they have. They have. Well, this is the the game version of a sensitivity read, which is something that they're trying to, yes. it was like a month or so ago, we did this, you know, we showed this video that showed a bunch of people talking about how important it is to do a sensitivity read. And really, if you think about it, filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino, so many filmmakers would not have a career. Kevin Smith, they would not have a career of existed if the thing of a sensitivity read was considered a requirement to make a movie. And that's what this sweet baby ink was. I watched Gundam's video. I watched side scrollers. So I was watching a bunch of stuff to just get up to speed on this. This is horrifying and it's being done right in the open. And the person on steam, I forget the guy's name, the person on steam who put together the list, here's all the companies 
it explains everything now. And the way these companies function, they function. It's like a, it's a, not just a grift. It's a shakedown. It's bribery. It's what was the woman's quote where it's like, Oh, we're, we're going to play it. We're going to oh, okay. play oh, great, great. in just a moment. Oh, we're going to play people. it. Okay, good, good. So, so it's, what it is, Chris, oh. you're right. It's a shakedown. It's extortion through the, co the corporation's cowardice because it's risk averse, risk -averse. to yes. go this route. It is yeah. much, it is less risk averse to call half of their audience or potential paying customers bigots because the Republicans then deal with this in their eyes. So I blame everybody. I don't say, well, I wouldn't say I don't blame the companies. They got shook down. No, they, they know they're getting shook down and they did it anyway because they did their, uh, they ran their analytics and they thought, well, it's less risk averse to just call half our audience bigots. Now they're paying a heavy, heavy price for that. And that's what this entire year is going to be, by the way, it's going to be the consequence year for entertainment, for games, especially for Hollywood. It's my next video coming out, but uh, especially for Hollywood. They, uh, yeah, Dune's doing great. They're fucked. They're completely fucked this year. After Dune, and by the way, I saw it for a fourth time yesterday. <gasps> Me too. I watched it as well. Oh, you watch it again? On 70 millimeter this time, though. Ooh, okay. I haven't seen it on <clears throat> 70 millimeter yet. Um, how was it? How was it? Oh uh, my god, it was like I I could couldn't even see the edges of the screen. Yeah. And so it felt like it was right in my face. Um, and Flip the back, sound. The but yeah, well, I see I was on the D box chair. I don't know what you guys call it in the States. 4D. I 40X. Think. Yeah. 40X. Uh, the first time. And that was really awesome. But then the second time, it's like you don't even need those chairs because the sound just vibrates through you. Yeah. I saw it in Screen X. Have you ever heard of that, Gary? Not making a joke about that. Okay. Uh, all right, good. Yeah, that four, was, four, 40X or Screen there's, X? There's, so there's 40X, which I, so I'm planning to see it at least a couple more times because I've, I've, I've seen a movie. movie I'm pretty sure I've seen one. In, oh, Screen X is the side one, right? That's the one yeah, where it's yeah. on the side. I saw yeah, the 2009 I, yeah. Star Trek like that. Yeah, I've seen those. I use that. Yeah. Was it good? Weird. It's, it's, it's really I weird. Like, I like it's it. It's weird, but for certain scenes, I like it because I'm looking around, I'm like, that wasn't in the movie. They created what they think was happening on the sides. It's got to be some software they use for some of it. It's not the entire movie. It's not 100% of the movie. It's a no. little over the third of the movie. But every action scene, and it was freaking cool, actually. Like when Paul rides the worm, it's like it's all, you're just surrounded well, by They're going to need to do stuff like that to survive, and it'll be, well, we'll get into it. Uh, it's called you, premium format. Could you premium pull, format pull up uh, that... Uh, the video the video please uh i'm sure most of you have seen it but let's go over it again shall we yeah let's do it let's do it oh all right this girl's so annoying. this is from by the way uh march uh uh 2019 2019 wow 2019 so this is when uh yeah it's in drinkers video anita sarkeesian and we showed it uh tweeted out in 2019 basically uh uh the same thing to cd project red like hey I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. You got a lot of you got a lot of accusations going out there. You oh, need, right, right. I'd hate for something ha to happen to your business without uh, some protection. You know, it'd be terrible. Uh, and, uh, and then we get this right around the same time. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Pause for a moment there. Just terrify them. That is Threaten sickening them. what she just said. It's it's literally your 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 that's that's like the mafia uses tactics like that. Right? Well, yes, they absolutely do. But let's. Let's take it a step further on how sickening it is because this is a grift. Make no yes. mistake, this is about money. So this marginalized person of color is using, and this is their language. I don't, I don't believe people are like that, by the way, and I don't use that language. Um, this marginalized person of color is using other marginalized people of color for her grift. She, whether she believes it or not, it doesn't matter. That doesn't change the fact that she is using identity for this grift. That's what makes it doubly evil. And the fact that like people don't notice this people in charge of giant corporations, either look the other way or don't notice it. 
uh, shows the, the the real problem we have. People are so afraid to look bad and look racist that they'll accept a racist using other people's races to line their fucking pockets. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I, I don't know. I was sickened by all this. And there's other clips and whatnot and other, uh, Gundam did a really good deep dive, but this stuff is, I mean, it's, it's happened in the entertainment industry, maybe more quietly. GDC is something I have a, a good friend. My buddy has a mobile gaming company. He buys games from overseas. He converts them to us format. And so he goes to GDC and he's seen this stuff happen even earlier. So this is 2019, all this stuff was happening even before that. And it's mm -hmm. disgusting. It's disgusting. I remember, and it, it, yeah, it, I remember when it was creeping in to comics. Right. And right. it was in uh, 2007, eight uh, with, you know, and, and I saw it with um, I'm blanking on his name now. God damn it. It's a uh, Greg Ruka, Greg Ruka, Greg Ruka wrote uh, a Wonder Woman and a Wolverine um, and the Wonder Woman. I mean, it wasn't as bad, but it was just fucking it just angered me. Uh, Wonder Woman chastises the Flash for putting out a forest fire. Because she's all, all right. for, forest fires are natural and they're part of the they're part of the ecosystem and and I'm like fucking shut up bitch. Um, but the worst one was Wolverine complaining about guns. What at a gun show? Yeah, the guy who's got a oh, like a Conan body count is complaining about guns, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is going on here? Uh, so yeah, I I saw it creeping in even back then. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's let's continue. Oh, uh, it's just a loop of it. If you okay, wanna... it is. Oh yeah, it's only twenty yeah. seconds. Okay, that's all we need to hear. Uh, th this is from a half hour video. Ryan did a video on it too, um, and I've seen some of the stuff. And it, dude, it doesn't get any better. Like there's some cra right. that that chick says some crazy shit. She's got a lot of problems, but they a bunch of people put her in power because of her skin color. <laughs> Yeah, and, and she and, said she was doing it for years too in the video. So years, like, what? She looks like she's twenty five. Uh, right, yeah, she's right. what three three years? Uh, okay, uh, you yeah, know whatever. But um, no. Uh, hey, respect for the grift. Uh, I guess except you're a piece of shit. And now that they have been exposed, there's that uh, aggregate on Steam that uh, has almost like two hundred thousand followers now, which is fantastic. Um, and then the sweet baby ink people were going after other people for trying to expose them. And it's like, wow, if you felt so strongly about these beliefs, you'd be shouting them from the rooftops, from the mountaintops. You would, there'd be no shame to your game. Why is there shame to your game? Why are you protecting your tweets? Why are you trying to silence people? This is the problem I have is that I, I, I love active debate. I love to talk to people. I'll talk to anybody. I don't care. We don't need to agree on on everything it doesn't matter to me yep. but the fact that they're unwilling to have the discussion and the debate is telling the other thing is i i blame less them it's like that that tactic of scaring someone about the possibilities of what could happen if they if you don't hire their company so that that tactic fine i blame the people writing the checks who are like oh my god well we should sign up with this company Instead of brushing it off, like, you know what? We've been making games for years that make a lot of money. This is not, if this is not going to add on. But Hollywood has consistently bent over to these grifts. They bent over with COVID compliance officers and actual credit on a movie now that you'll see with a lot of movies of a certain era and probably still now. Um, so you got COVID compliance officer, intimacy coordinator, DEI. Yeah. I mean, this is Hollywood is bent over for all of those. None of that, none of those things have anything to do with making a good film. And then the worst part is the HR department's dictating jokes that can or cannot be told about certain ethnicities based on this. Shut the F up. You know, shut the F up. So let, let someone like a Chris Nolan or Tarantino or whatever write their thing or Denis Villeneuve for that matter. Well, it's Although, Quentin Tarantino's quitting. After his next movie, he's done. Yeah, after you think the, it probably has something movie. to do with, uh, you know, just the. I'm sure he oh. he wants to end on his own terms and stuff, but I bet you it has a lot to do with the environment in Hollywood too. 
Well, the, the, I'll tell you this. Like, so I, I was having a conversation with Rob Robert Meyer Burnett. There you go. RMB. RMB. Good guy. We we saw Dune at the fan screening a couple weeks ago. You know, and he, he's talked about this. You should you should get a direct from him. But he said that he does this show where he talks to like wardrobe and costume designers. It's yeah. Like a shep- separate show on Campia's channel. It's like designing a deep Hollywood. Dive yeah. Into the craft. Yeah. It's 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 yeah. It's deep dive interviews for nerds. Right. And a lot of people in the industry, veterans, are just thinking of leaving because even at those levels, look, you work on a film set, there's a way that things go down on a film set. It's 18-hour days. It's incredibly stressful. You're sleeping five hours best a night. It's intense for months. And then you get a film made and boom, you know. But it is, on a film set, blue humor breaks the tension, joking is a way to just get along with people you worked at you look you worked uh, for a car company tesla right like you know look i i i've never worked for a car but i worked on cars and motorcycles just for fun with my friends we always just sort of goof on each other when there's that sort of like can, can you hang and this new generation they brought in they can't hang and they're they choose to be offended choose to be offended what is that quote you know if you choose to be a victim you become your own oppressor yes Right. It's, it's a absolutely choice. true. It's a choice. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, we've all had friends like this and uh, that's why most of them aren't my friends anymore, but, uh, right, <laughs> but we've all true. had friends. You had to walk on eggshells around. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. th- those, that's the worst thing. It's like, Oh, it, and that, that like now we're in a culture, we're in a culture, the victim culture where you got to walk on eggshells. Nobody wants, and they want you to be uncomfortable. That's, that's part of it. You know, I, I, I didn't read the art of war. But, but I know there's something in there to the effect that you always want to keep your opponent. You don't want them on solid ground. You always want to keep them backing up, right? That's that's what this is. That's what this invasion is. This invasion of all of our institutions has been. And, you know, thank God some people are just saying, fuck this. I, you know, I'm yeah. I'm not going to walk on eggshells anymore. I'm going to say what I want. I don't really care what happens uh, because I'm tired of you, <laughs> you know? I just well, I, I, I've read The Art of War by Sun Tzu. It's Sun Tzu? really good. Sun Tzu. But like, I mean, it's a lot of it is about like farmland and this. Yes, and like, yeah. how to, it's like, That's why I couldn't resource, get through it. <laughs> a lot of it is like resource management. Yeah. I read the audio book. Um, God, I forget the guy who read it. It's really good voice. So it got me through it. But like, it's a lot of it is like resource management and just like taking stances on things. The Art of War. Was, Have a lot of guns cool. and food. The end. Right. But like, that book was recommended <laughs> by what was his name? Mike Ovitz. Do you remember Mike Ovitz in the nineties? Yes, yes. He was a big, he was like head of CAA and he like made all of his agents read that book and it's great strategy. The thing is there's no one in the corporate or what they call the C-suite or whatever um, that is willing to have a backbone and stand up to these people. And then you've got companies like Japanese game companies with that. They're coming out with that movie. What's it called? Uh, that game, sir, that game, Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade is coming out with that super hot Asian lady. That Listen, is good luck taking away lady. boobs from Japan. Good luck with that. They will die on those hills. What's that <laughs> game where they used to play volleyball? Was it Dead or Alive? Dead or Alive was the video game where that you just play volleyball and it's a bunch of girls in bikinis. It's a Japanese game. I'll look it up now. So, that sounds like a kind of game I could play. I feel like you're going to get something else coming up <laughs> <You> <laughs> <Yeah>. be careful <laughs> with those searches I asked yeah X- yeah dead or alive a couple of weeks ago i asked x-ray girl to do a certain search her history's probably jacked up forever because of that i think i did it on the a guest account thank uh, god yeah do it on like incognito on vpn <laughs> <laughs> it's just video games here but i just it is dead or alive it's a series of games i played them like it's a fighting game but they have games where like they go and they, they play just volleyball I mean, what is, is Stellar Blade? I think is the name of that yeah, game. I have but to pre-order. They still know how to Stellar have Blade. fun, probably because they're a super repressed culture. But uh, they they know right. how to have fun, and uh, and that that's what um, a, a, a lot of the well, no, all the activists don't. No activist is fun. There's been no activist who knows how to have fun. They're all really fucking miserable people, and they just yes. want us to be miserable. Fuck that. I'm gonna laugh at them. All the way to my grave. It's fine. Uh, but it, it's it's comical that they, you know, like, they don't think these videos are going to get out. And I, I, I guess we got to look at it at the context. In 2019, things were fucking rolling. Uh, 
I mm. seem to remember there was a different president. I seem to remember there was a pretty good economy. The best one I've seen in my lifetime over that, those three years. Best, it yeah. was like America was booming. Um, so they were also funded by a lot of investor money. And they were feeling pretty good about themselves, and they had the sheer fucking hubris to go out and make speeches like that. I don't think they would do that now. Uh, we even have BlackRock walking some shit back. Uh, we, they, there's a statement from them that came out recently where they admitted that the the that they've had some brand damage because of the DEI policies. Isn't yeah. that funny? Isn't that funny? Right after Disney had to come out and admit that they've had some brand damage uh, for basically the same thing. So they're they're not they're 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 not that proud that proud of it now because we're in the consequence stage. You know, you talked about all those extra jobs at Hollywood we have now. Yeah. Uh covid compliance officer uh 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 intimacy intimacy coordinator um DEI stuff. DEI stuff because Hollywood needs more middlemen and now everybody's getting laid off. There's been two strikes. There's another one around, the, possibly around the corner that, you know, and I asked you and I, yeah, I think it actually could happen and it would, it, it would shut down Hollywood again. I don't know how long yeah. it would last. I have a friend in IATC and he's like, the, the whole idea was that the IATC stood by the WGA and SAG, stood yes. by them. And, you know, they suffered too, cause they weren't working. Yep. And so now what IATC is saying is, it's your turn, WGA and SAG. Uh -huh. You got to stand with us. And if it has to go to a shutdown that lasts a couple weeks, a couple months or more, that's what's going to happen. So it's it's coming, Gary. It's coming. If they don't get what they want, it's going to be another shutdown of you know of, of films and, and TV and production. It's going to be crazy. So the mantra in Hollywood crazy. right now is stay alive until 25 because oh, is they, that what it is? that's what it is because i mean right after you know uh male and pale is stale uh stay right. alive until 25 and uh if they shut down even for a month they're screwed like because yeah. because right now um they're not really buying the only scripts they're buying are is stuff that they think might be able to work that they could edit and get out quickly which mm -hmm. i i don't know if that's the best way to go but uh, th they're going to edit and put out quickly. Uh, your sphere, the independent sphere is been just destroyed by streaming. Absolutely destroyed by streaming. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, where people used to go to those little artisanal theaters. Uh, there's tons of yeah. them in, in big cities like San Francisco, uh, to go watch those movies and, and they'd have a couple million dollar budget and they make their money back pretty easily. That stuff isn't around anymore. Um, so even if they turn those little indies around, and they're hoping for some sleeper hit. It's probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. Well, a lot of those movies are are around Gary. It's just that they're like they get picked up by an A twenty four, right? A twenty four will pick up those films because they don't cost very much. And then a lot of independents like myself will make a small movie for like hundred grand or less, under a hundred grand, and then that can be monetized. So there's a the market is kind of shifting. But it used to be these small indie movies, or even like that movie that um. Um, you know, Sydney Sweeney did anyone but you. It was super cheap to make. It's a romantic comedy that could have been made 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and they made it now. And it's, it's, I mean, look, X, I, I look, romantic comedy is not always my thing, but it was with Sydney Sweeney in it. Pretty, pretty fun, pretty fun movie. I went to see it. So, did you bring your um, popcorn? Bucket? But they're lost. I did not they get lost. What, what, what they need to figure out, and I don't have an answer for it, is not being lost in the like in the white noise in the in the all the sea of streaming. Uh, well, and again, those little artisanal theaters in San Francisco, uh, four of them closed, so they're gone. Yeah, and uh, they still need those. They still need those. Yeah. And and how do they survive this year? That's the question. But they are. But those are the only scripts they're turning around. They're not going to be turning around any big budget scripts this year at all, pretty much. That, that's that's what it, I heard. So, I think they're going to be looking at more classic, tried and true, like like a romantic comedy made for you know under fifty million dollars, or a horror film made for under twenty five yes, million yes. dollars. Like those are going to be and and the big spectacle movies, like say a Dune or a you know Star Wars, Marvel, whatever. I don't know how they're going to make those. And the problem is this. Here's the problem now with these we mentioned earlier, and I've brought it up many times, the grift 
all these different things that Hollywood now has to spend money on. Uh, the business model of Hollywood doesn't work. It's they need to reinvent the business it's model done. of how they make movies. It's absolutely like, done. It's, it's done. It's not profitable. Especially when you look at, go to the Godzilla. There's an official Toho Godzilla YouTube channel. There is a six-minute behind-the-scenes making of, of Godzilla Minus One. And without actually saying it out loud, he goes, here's how normally a Hollywood movie gets made. And you see like this image of like a thousand people. And he says, here's what we did. We had 35 people and it just whoop, shrinks it. And then the director, who is a VFX um, artist, you know, by his own right, he just worked directly. There was no middleman. And he, he, he doesn't actually say it out loud, but it's like, we just did things cheaply. They built practical sets, but they only built parts of the set and they filled everything out with um, digital, right? So it was yeah, all yeah. Uh, computer graphics, but they built hard sets. So when you see the people on a set, they are on a boat, they are on this, they're on a set for a fake boat, right? So so they were all on physical sets and they just sort of made the set larger. Even like, oh my God, there's a funny thing where he talks about, you know, the scene in Godzilla Minus One where the woman is on the train? Yep. And he- Great he scene. Want, it's a great scene. He really wanted that scene in the movie. And they were going to build like the train car. He's like, we can't afford the whole train car. So he's like, we can't afford half the train car. He goes, can I just get the sliver of where the woman sits? That is the only thing that's physically real is where she's physically sitting. Everything else is digital, widened out. But it's like he so wanted this scene in the movie. Also, what did they do? They planned. So it's not like there were any reshoots. There's 600 special effect shots in that film. I just saw when I saw Dune... Um, Part two last night in Screen X, there was a trailer for the god awful god, there's Kong, a new trailer for that the, the Godzilla game. Kong movie. Looks freaking terrible, it looks, so dumb. It looks like, terrible. And, and in light of like, and how much did that cost? With, I know, I like it's Godzilla minus one is going to embarrass that film, it's just going to absolutely embarrass it as far as quality. I mean, it, it's it's not knows, just for children, it's for more money. That movie's for dumb people. That movie is stupid. It's just like, I'm looking at this going, this is dumb. I, 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 I mean, I'm going to see it and I'm going to talk about it. But based on what I've seen, if it's half as dumb as the last one, but I remember when the last one came out, the last one actually did well. It did well. It did. It did well because it was, there was nothing in theaters and it was theaters were reopening. They had the social distancing, all that. Stuff. Yeah. They're going to have like Ghostbusters as competition, but not much competition. I mean, except for the, uh, oh, wait. American society. Gary, I put in the private chat the um the American Society of Magical Negroes. I don't know if you want to share screen with this, but I found the shirt that you should wear when you're Do doing you want your me to review. share it? Uh, why yeah. not? Uh, there's different versions of it. I was going to wear a Black Panther costume. Is that Oh, there that's you go. even better. <laughs> I think I think uh, Ryan should wear his Black Panther costume, and you wear this. Oh, God, There's yes. also this. Wait, wait, oh, oh, the different colors. Look at this. Oh, I'm. You, I, you I, 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 I can't wear white. I can't wear white. <laughs> Why not? Get. The, I think I might I just get don't the wear gold. white. I think the gold looks. I think really the gold looks good. Nice, actually. <laughs> All right, that's it. We're kind of forever. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Oh my God. <laughs> no, it's, is it? Is it? It's unisex. It's unisex. So X-ray girl, you could get one. I might. <laughs> oh my God, it's so. Uh, yeah, uh, movie that movie comes weird. out. The, I think the twentieth, right? And uh, no, no, that movie comes out. I believe on the fifteenth. On the fifteenth, so you're Friday. right. You're right. Uh, yeah. When yeah. does oh, X? I thought does... it was the twentieth. Did the dates change? No, no. Twenty second is Ghostbusters. 29th is Kong. Fifteenth is Magical. What's coming out 20? Oh, is that X-Men? I, I was getting my... Uh... No, no, I think it's Ghostbusters. It's the 27th. Oh, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. March, oh. March is slammed with it's big It's slammed. I, it's March why? has more, more releases than June. Has more it's big releases. It's really... What well, you know what it is? Is all those uh, Dune... Um, all those movies were delayed from last year, so they had to get them in the very next quarter. That would That's my belief. Uh, I so. You know, I have, I have no... Thing that nothing to back that up but it, it, it makes no sense to not wait just until the summer uh, especially with right. ghostbusters you know ghostbusters, ghostbusters was a, was summer, a summer, movie summer movie when it came out in 84 dude that song was playing the entire summer like on every yeah. radio all the time and we didn't get tired of it by the way yeah so, yeah but we didn't get tired I, I don't know i'm mixed on that one it's like Pat and oswald come on and jolly I, I, not johnny yeah, I, 
Yeah. Mr. I needed therapy after the, I love how like uh, the girl from Miss Marvel's like, eh, you know, uh, people didn't like our stuff. They need to focus on characters more. But uh, uh, a dude from the Eternals is like, I need therapy. Did you see the thing that Dante we'll put out uh, a verbal riot show on Twitter? That, that quote from Dakota Johnson is the smartest. Oh yeah. 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 I, I retweeted that. And we talked yeah, about yeah. it yesterday. Holy, yeah, exactly. That's I, 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 that is such a. Well, great... let's contrast that. Let's let's right. wait. Let's contrast that with Kirsten Dunst. Oh. Do you have that article? Yep, 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 yep. Let me oh, wait, we're this. seven minutes away from the premiere. Okay, well, we can do a quick contrast. So, Kirsten okay. Dunst, uh, you know, not my favorite Mary Jane, but I think she did a good job in the in the vastly superior Sam Raimi Spider Man One and Two. Uh, which are two, uh, Spider-Man 2 is my favorite Spider-Man movie, the best Spider-Man movie ever made. Uh, Kirsten Dunst got called a girly girl on <laughs> Spider-Man set and wishes she pushed back. She, uh, she'd make another superhero movie because you get paid a lot of money. All right, well, like, I appreciate the, the second part of that answer. Yeah, just right? being honest. Just being honest. Um, what is there something wrong with being called a girly girl? There's a lot of girls who take pride in being a girly girl. Uh, but uh, is this, I mean, is this the biggest complaint she had on the set of Spider Man? Uh, by the way, Sam Raimi, one of the most uh, amiable directors out there by all accounts, yeah. like really cool guy, like pretty easy to work with. He's not like James Cameron. Uh, he gets along with everybody. Yeah. Sam is just chill, you know? Yep. Yeah, this is I, I, the, what that's. I don't know. Was that like? Yeah, the she's in Civil War you know? chat. She is in Civil right. War. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, look, these days she could be called something else, and it might not be as flattering. But I'll just say that girly girl is that something she wishes wishes push back for why she's still obsessing over that on the set of that movie she was called a girly girl twenty four years ago, twenty two years ago. Who cares? Is it's, it that offensive to be called a girl when you're a girl? I didn't even know that that was an that that's an offensive thing to be called like a manly man no, or a girly girl. The like, only whatever. time I've heard that is from other women. Uh, I'm a girly girl when they try to pull the girl card. Yeah, they what's do. What's wrong with that? I I just am like, what's the wrong with it? I want to be Maybe equal, except threat. when you have to kill that spider. Oh, Alan Ng says he's heading through your neck of the woods. He's just, he just discovered a Bucky's. He's sending me photos. Oh, Ooh. oh, you, you need Enjoy to stop shopping. in the citadel of capitalism. Holy cow. He's sending me, mm -hmm. Alan just texted me some. You've never been to a Bucky's, Chris? I've never been to a Bucky's, no. Oh, well, you, what is what, it? Is it like a Walmart or? No, it's, it's, it's a, a wall. It's the Walmart of gas stations. It's a gas oh, station. Nice. Too, yes, I've heard of it. Yeah. It's a gas station with like, and they're building the, uh, New Brumfalls, they're building the biggest one of them all. And there's like a hundred gas pumps. There's a, uh, practically a grocery store in there. There's a restaurant in there. Their barbecue is freaking amazing. They got these little uh, tacos that are amazing. Uh, f everything. They got everything. We should go. Um, we should go. And, and it's fun. You walk in there and there's like a good vibe. You know, it's like, wow. we love capitalism. It's like, oh, I'm home. I'm home. How are the bathrooms? Because gas clean, really nice. clean as hell. Absolutely wow. spotless. Wow. Oh, and their urinals have like little, like not, not just like little plastic barriers, full walls in between. So you get a little, so. Ugh. So you have a stall for a urinal. That's so cute. I mean, essentially, I love it. you know, love it. That's great. Okay. So you want to scroll down a little bit? What does she want to provide some context to this? Right. Right. Let's see. Uh, Kirsten Dunst, uh, said in a new interview with, uh, Marie Claire that she's finally at a stage of her career where she no longer feels nervous. Is her career really going that great? I mean, I, I haven't seen her much, but that's good. That's good. Speaking her mind, adding, I feel at home sharing everything on set now. I don't know if that's necessarily great. I don't need to know everything. Uh, it's a big change from uh, Dunst's experience on Sp on the Spider-Man set decades ago. The scandal! As a young actor, Dunst didn't have the confidence to speak up when things bothered her. Case in point, briefly uh, being repeatedly called a girly girl on the Marvel set. 
Good God, how did she survive? How did she survive? Her male oppressors were calling her a girly girl. It was a joke, but on Spider-Man, they would call me girly girl sometimes on the walkie-talkie. We need girly girl. <laughs> it's just, that's oh, dudes. Yeah, it's so dumb to get up offended by that. Whatever. Do you know, like, occasionally, <laughs> like, the FNT, we'll, we'll just text each other to go, you're gay. Or say something yeah. much worse, just out of the blue. Yeah. Because it's yeah. funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> much worse, to be honest with you. He didn't grow up with <laughs> brothers, clearly. Yes. <laughs> well, it, it sounds like this writer from Variety is just looking. I mean, it's, all, all, it's quoting an interview from another media outlet and then putting it in a context like this is a story. So this person is dude, digging something up, but it is dumb. It's pretty Websites stupid. are fucking dead, dude. This is like, yeah, they, are. I, they can't die quick enough. They really can't. Did you see the Screen Rant headline? That uh, Nerd Cookies is in the chat. What's up, Nerd Cookies? Uh, hey, Nerd Cookies. God, she retweeted. It said something to the effect of the Dune 2 post-credit the Dune 2 post-credit scene starts 45 minutes before the end of the film. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? That's stupid. That's uh, and, and credits. Shout out to whatever. Nerd Cookies. Nerd Cookies is doing a stream with Quinn's Ideas and Danica, com uh, you know, Comic Book Girl Ooh. 19. The three of them are my favorite Dune well, They are Dune experts. Dune tubers. Yeah, they're Dune, they're Dune tubers, tubers for sure. That's cute. Dune tuber is a real word. I know Quinn's I uh, from uh, his a Song of Ice and Fire stuff. but uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dunce added that uh, she didn't say anything. Uh, she also said it was a conscious choice not to capitalize off of the Spider-Man thing and become a movie star, movie star. Okay. I, I don't believe that at all, but that's enough. Right. Okay. So, I mean, she's a dumb actress, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think the better point, you made the better point that this is, uh, that was the Hollywood reporter. Was that variety? Hollywood variety, reporter? Variety. Fucking same thing. They're owned by the same company. Uh, mm -hmm. Citing another article from a magazine to make an article that's absolutely nothing. But um, if we want to find, uh, I retweeted it, uh, Dante's tweet, Verbal Riot's tweet of yeah. uh, Dakota, Dakota Johnson, Johnson completely getting it. So right after Sydney Sweeney, very popular. Uh, I'm sure it's her talent, her assets. Um, but, you know, she trolled Madam Webb on SNL, uh, which was kind of funny. Uh, but then you get this, you get this x-ray girl. You're going to have to read it. Cause like it's the print is too small for me, unfortunately. Uh, okay. That's fine. Uh, so does it bother you when people write nasty reviews? She says, unfortunately, I'm not surprised this, that this has gone down the way it has. Uh, they ask, <laughs> is there a reason for that? And she says, it's so hard to get movies made and in these big movies that get made, and it's even starting to happen with the little ones, which is what's really freaking me out. Decisions are being made by committees and art does not do well when it's made by committees. Films are made by a filmmaker and a team of artists around them. You cannot make art based on numbers and algorithms. My feeling has been for a long time that audiences are extremely smart and executives have started to believe that they're not. Audiences will always be able to sniff out bull... Um, you can say shit. Uh, Bullshit. Say I'll it. say it. Bullshit. <laughs> Even if films start to be made with AI, humans aren't going to be effing Fucking. wanting to see those. There yeah, you thank go. you. I'll cut for you. Uh, but it was definitely an experience for me to make that movie. I had never done anything like it before. I probably will never do anything like it again because I don't make sense in that world. And I know that now, but sometimes in this industry, you sign on to something and it's one thing. And then as you're making it, it becomes a completely different thing. And you're like, wait, what? But it was a real learning experience. And of course, it's not nice to be a part of something that's ripped to shreds. But I can't say that I don't understand. Freaking absolutely based brilliant response. Um, Hollywood would still be in trouble, but they wouldn't be in the trouble they're in this badly if if the actors just responded and the directors, if James Mangold had responded to Indiana Jones to set like all you have to say is I did the best I could. We had a really hard working crew. Uh I and I hope you like it. Yeah. That's that's it. That's all you need to say. That's all you need to say. Um, but they're in a this exposes a bigger problem. 
and it's and it's I think it's the reason. Well, it's the reason there's a fellowship of one nine nine, and these media outlets are dying, uh, and Hollywood is dying, is because while certainly r- writing by committee, running it through algorithms, I would argue that their algorithm is flawed because it's corrupted by DEI. If they just ran a normal fucking algorithm, they might actually do better. I'm not saying it's great, but they would do better. But they're running a flawed algorithm by forcing in. Things that people don't want. By f- f- DEI is segregationist. That's what it is. It's segregationist. It's antithetical to art. It's antithetical to life. And we've talked about it before. But the one major factor that nobody talks about is the audience. You pissed off half the audience. You pissed off half your customers. So you can retool the algorithm. You can go back to basics. Uh, and and they probably will or some will try it is never going to get that all of that audience back ever. And now they know they're in kind of a post industry and it's going to have to retool itself and invent it, make itself something else, but it'll never be the primary form of entertainment that it was even in 2019. It will not reach those heights again. It won't. No, it's, it's almost like movies are becoming culturally not as relevant. Yes. It's that's just the way it is. Games are more relevant YouTube is more is very relevant, you know, whatever you think of that. But movies used to be this connecting thing, and now it's just it's become so divided. And the fact that that's used in the marketing, look what happened with Kenobi, right? And remember the character Reva, all that stuff. What nonsense! They knew they had a bad show, and the way to cover the to CYA just cover their asses was to reach to, to attack the audience the same audience that loved lando calrissian and were begging for lando calrissian billy d williams to be in the star wars sequels eventually he had a bit part in episode nine which was whatever but still like you can't attack the audience for one thing and then like the i, I i've known this audience i am the audience i have been you know like you, Gary, older nerd, been going to things, going to conventions, and been around nerd space, and going to comic shops, and all this stuff just got bad recently. Mm-hmm. And by recently, I'm in the last like maybe ten years ish. Yeah, I think know? we're we're going on almost a decade, but I mean, things yeah. really, really went south when TDS infected Hollywood. That's another yeah. thing that media will never talk about is TDS, TDS, and Me Too, TDS and Me Too completely jacked Hollywood in a way that, uh, remember they've survived so much stuff. Hollywood has survived so much stuff, but it looks like they can't survive themselves. Uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, TDS and me too. And all DEI is, is me too 2.0. It's a power grab. It's a power grab. It's all it is. Yep. It's nothing genuine about it. There's nothing genuine in Hollywood. And, uh, while we get, individual films that feel genuine and authentic because they are the industry is not never has been but they've been able to uh, occasionally make something uh that's genuine art um they can't do that anymore they're incapable of it because they've legislated their way out of creating art and now they just make product content which is propagandized for the most part that's why i believe that the a new wave of independent films, projects, whatever you want to say, like I think, and then Eric July is a part of that in the comic space. I, they're, they're film you, projects. Dude, you got film pro. You just made one of the I, best documentaries I've seen in a long time. It, it's, it's like, it's like the nerd decline of the Western civilization. Uh, oh, wow, part two oh, for me. That's God. like, uh, that, that's, that, that's, I, I think it was really good drinkers out there doing a short movie that he's just going to put on his channel and more people right. are going to start doing that. Uh, you know, razor fist is uh, on his, uh, third book on his third book right now. Um, and, uh, it's about to come out, but like everybody's doing it and, uh, you know what, maybe it'll be localized. It'll be artisanal. Maybe like, you know, there used to be a time where a band would be popular, and I talked about this yesterday, but uh, w- in a city. Like, Oingo yeah. Boingo was insanely popular, was like the most Im- most popular band in Southern California. Like, they could sell out yeah. fucking stadiums. Probably couldn't sell out an arena in New York, maybe, but uh, they were insanely popular in Southern California. 
and there's regional yeah. bands, and maybe that's just where it goes back to, and I, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but you, you, but you still need to- court, you still need stuff that drives the market. You know, that's I got to talk to Drinker because <clears throat> I think he should be on all platforms. The way I released my film was, you know, it was available on video on demand. You could pay, you could buy it or rent it. Then it was on free platforms later. And then I put out the blue. I think, I think drinker in order to like go beyond his audience, you know, this is the thing. Cause you see like, you've got it. You got to go, not just your YouTube audience, how about everybody? Because I saw the trailer for the movie. That'll appeal to <clears> anybody <throat> who likes those kinds, you know, action movies. It's a smart action film, high production value. P- put it on voodoo. I I, 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 I think he might. Voodoo. I don't think I uh, talk to him. He'd be open you to know, it. I'll talk to him but because I, like not every like there is certain audiences for different spaces. Let let it be everywhere and put it on YouTube. I mean, Attack of the Duck. It's on YouTube. It's on Tubi. I'm, I get money from that, right? I get I get the ad revenue from that. That was always my plan. I got another movie. I'm a, I, I, I'm, I, I got another movie where I'm almost. It's like I'm almost. You're almost real, done. I'll have to play offline. To, well, it's I have a cut. I have a cut, and I'm going to do something that's in the history of Kickstarter I've never heard of. But I'll cool. tell you later. Excellent. Okay. And, and I'm, also, I, I'm doing the same with my book. I mean, like you know, I'm gonna we're gonna do a pre order campaign, but it's also going to be available at Barnes and Noble and. Amazon. Yes, you need to be, I yeah. believe, just be everywhere. It's like it might perform here better. This it's also a really interesting lesson and just like how the industry works, and then getting access to those, you know, to, to bookstores, whatever, theaters, whatnot. Like it's helpful. Now, by the way, it is. we, we have speaking of independent stuff, we have something to share, don't we? Yes, we it, do. It already <clears throat> premiered, and there were a <clears throat> ton of people in there watching it. I don't know what the views are up to now. But, uh, it is, at, well, it just premiered nine minutes ago, so. Okay, so it's not going to be that many, but maybe back it up to the beginning. And I don't know anything about this. I know nothing about it. I know you. I know, it was being okay, made. Yeah. I cannot wait. Okay. Well, here we okay. go. Here we go. <laughs> Fan- Lord of the Rings for me is my top fantasy volume. series of all time. Oh, really? Freaking Canadian uh, internet. And, but he captured Canadian the heart. Exactly what rings of recycled. Why don't you restart it? Restart it. No restart it. Restart it. Restart it. Let's give the give it. Fan, Lord of the Rings for me is my top fantasy series of all time. Uh, but he captured the heart. Exactly what rings of recycled fantasy didn't do. There is no heart there. By injecting say identity politics into a story and it doesn't work <laughs> i'm really tired of all the sexism everywhere <laughs> your seat belts it's going to be a bumpy ride it's the little moments that make this film it's the character moments it's not these big battles it's like when when gandalf's telling pippin I, I that scene is my favorite from return of the king he's telling him like no it's just another journey that hope that used to be the good guy always wins. Uh-huh. There's something to save. There's something you should strive for and like achieve something and be satisfied. And now it's just all dark and gritty and you're all doomed and everything's destruction. You want to watch that? You can just walk out your house. The the orcs are at the doors of the keep them and like Theoden just gives this incredible speech. Just oh. short and it just like fourth air lingers and out they go just. Mine is when Treebeard sends out a call and leads the last march of the ants to Isengard. Chills every time. It's a good scene. Kind of, this is like bittersweet, but just like when Lord of the Rings came out and I saw it, I was like, holy shit, the power of movies. We're in such a good position. This is going to get great. Like, the more time goes on, the better it'll get, right? Uh, we kind of peaked, you. didn't we? Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. So Check out his Candace? channel. I think I saw baggage claim. I saw Chrissy's in there now. Disparu, Mauler. Oh my God. So I, oh God, that's, in fact, I, I, if I stop my cam, I made my character. That's my awesome. Avatar. That is awesome. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'll share that later. Disparu. So thanks everybody Disparu for supporting again. and thanks for making that. That is, uh, what uh, a, give that is, a like. Is this is so Good weird. Job. This is surreal. It's surreal. That's weird. Well, there's a third one apparently that's coming. There's a third Ooh. one coming. So there you go. A few years ago, I was just work working at Tesla, making videos. 
<laughs> Here you are. I didn't think anything, any of this shit would yeah. happen. Oh it's my crazy. god, that's that's so awesome. Thank you guys. You're awesome. Hell to the fellowship. <laughs> that was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And uh yeah, that's that's where the future is. The, by the way, I don't know how much you want to say. That's a former animator at uh Family Guy, Rick and Morty, um The uh, Simpsons. The Simpsons. Like- yeah, um, uh, King, of, King of the Hill. So this guy, Dominic Pulsino, if you look up his credits, he's just a working animator that works yeah. in the industry, right? And he just, he listens to all of us, apparently, and is just like a super fan. And even if you look at the description of the first episode, it was just like, this is just sort of a tribute to all the people that are more entertaining than the crap that Hollywood's putting out now. So, um yeah, super cool dude. That just he made a feature film that's actually on uh, Amazon. God, I forget the name of it. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, I'm gonna but, look it up. But it's um, I'll I'll, I'll find it. He's uh, he just is a fan. Is just like I don't know. I'll just do this as a goof. I mean, obviously it's limited animation, but like I talked to him it's, about it, and he said that like the fact that he could turn that around so fast. That's right. That's pretty brilliant. That's pretty brilliant. But kind, it's like kind of a talented guy. That? How yeah, do you monetize? How do you monetize it? You know, oh, how does he? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think he can. Uh, I, you know, I don't know how his writing is, but uh, he's free to monetize the hell out of that. I, I, he could just clip our stuff all day long if he wants to keep doing that. I, I got no problem with it. <laughs> I got here, he did a feature, but, I found it on Amazon. But how oh. does he keep making that stuff? Uh, and and he can find other ways to make it too. And I mean, you, you don't want to live by hoping to go viral like that. Cause that's not, you know what, go play the lottery. Then you, you have just yeah. as much of a chance, but um, I, I hate the word grind. I, I, it makes it sound negative, but if you're really enjoying what you're doing, it's not really a grind, you know, uh, right. but just being consistent and, and uh, pulling, you know, making those two that quickly shows. And obviously he's an animator. A former animator from the freaking Simpsons. And so, yeah, I, he knows how to be consistent. Well, he's what's, working what's on this? Crapopolis that is, right there. So Crapopolis. Uh, Crapopolis. I, I yeah, I've never heard. I think it's on Fox, but he he did the movie that he did that's on Amazon. It's free. Part of Prime is Love Sick Fool, Love in the Age of Like. It's kind of done in the same uh, love, of love in the style. Age of Like. <laughs> love in the Age of Like. Love Sick That's Fool. good. You want to so pull it's it on Amazon? That's a huge link. <laughs> That you put in yeah, there. Sorry about that. No, no, it's it an was, Amazon link. It's all good. <laughs> it's like right a here. it's like a three page link. Uh, yeah. If you want to put it up, X Ray Girl. Yeah. Uh, put that, oh yeah, my god, so, that is a big link. <laughs> no, we'll just cut off all anything after the question mark. You can just delete it because that's all the data that tracks everything. Oh, they can so, track me. Yeah, love sick fool, love so, in the love age of likes. So. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy yeah, that buy after the show. Yeah, I'm gonna like, straight up buy it. There you go. Well done. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you, I, Dominic. Hey, hey, can I rent this in Canada? I don't even know. All right, real quick, um, because we are on a time limit today. Could you pull up the the Bob Iger article? Oh. The Bob Iger article. This is this is uh again shocking news. Oh, shocking no. news. Um Disney has killed a few projects amid studio overhaul, says Bob Iger. We've not been that public about it. Okay, I have a question just off the top of my head. I'm sure you all have the same question. If there is projects that weren't good enough, how did Echo and the Marvels come out? (laughs) And do some of the projects rhyme with (laughs) Barshmores? Right? So, uh, yeah. How is the Alkalite still coming out? Okay. Um, so let's keep in mind that the same people who created the problem are expected to fix it. Okay. Uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger said, the studio killed a few projects already that we just didn't feel were strong enough. Uh, last time I checked, Snow White. White people. It's still coming out. <laughs> As the company tries to reverse the box office slump. We're doing a lot. When we talk about improving our film slate, there are really three approaches. One is you have to kill things you no longer believe. And that is not easy in this business because either you've gotten started, 
you have something costs, you have some costs. It's a relationship with either your employees or with a creative community. And it's not an easy thing, but you got to make those tough calls. Uh, uh, but so, so are they going to announce what projects? Because the thing is, this I, I do not recall ever a project that Kathleen Kennedy announced at start from Lucasfilm that has ever been announced that it's not happening. She's announced a lot of things that are happening. What happened to the uh, what happened to the Lando? What there was going to do a a, a Lando movie or a Lando series? What's going I, on? With I that? think their policy is they have no intention, and you've talked about this before with these. Uh, like deals they make with directors. Like after um, a deal and uh, Blau were fired from uh, Batgirl, they were offered like a little producing deal or something like that. And they're given an office and they're forgotten about where they can pitch stuff, but they're forgotten about. And it's a way to placate, right? So yeah. I believe their philosophy, no, I know Lucasfilm's philosophy is, yeah, we're going to announce a Rianne Johnson trilogy with no intention of ever releasing it as a marketing tool to sound like it's a vote of confidence for right. The Last Jedi. And uh, for you sports ball fans out there, you know what the vote of confidence means for a coach? That he's going to get fired pretty soon. So um, they uh, the Lando TV show was given to What's-His-Face, uh, Donald, and Glover? Donald Glover, Donald Glover yeah. to develop as a movie that they're never going to fucking develop. Uh, Rogue Squadron. Did they ever announce it was canceled? They no, they just quietly let it go away. And that's what this happens. They, they delay it long enough to where they hope you forget about it. And it just never happens. Oh, it's still, you know, 20 years from now, uh, Kathleen Kennedy will still be running Lucasfilm. She'll be 92. And uh, Rianne Johnson is like uh, on his uh, 16th Knives Out movie that, uh, you know, people in San Francisco like to watch and think it's smart. And uh, he'll be, uh, well, once I can fit it in my schedule. You know, that's pretty much what they're going to do. Yeah, I'm just curious if some of the Star Wars projects, because I, I feel like Kathleen Kennedy can announce anything she wants in order to. <laughs> she does. You know, <laughs> well, in order to get the money yeah. to do something she needs the parent company to approve it so she can't just do whatever right and the acolyte i think is going to be god awful when's oh, that did i hear june house, it's, yeah and house it, of the dragon is june too, it's right? coming out the same month as house of the dragon <laughs> oh that's gonna be a good month oh uh, i'm gonna have to yeah house of the dragon is not far away i can't wait oh for my, it yeah how are, they, how are they how'd they get it out so quick well hbo knows what they're doing so they use the, the, I mean, like, however you felt, I like, listen, Game of Thrones, the last three seasons were essentially dog shit. But like, yeah. as far as costuming and set design, top notch, like absolutely top yeah. notch. They were a machine, a well-oiled machine. They know what they're doing. Um, <clears throat> and, and they, they have a competent showrunner who's actually run shows before. So, uh, they, yeah, they got to turn around. They also lessen the episodes to eight from 10 so they could turn around because HBO recognized you can't have these prestige series come out once every two years no matter how good it is you're gonna lose audience yeah. uh you're gonna you know like hey i love freaking tulsa king the fact that it's taken two years to produce like a season two for that um which turned out to be good news by the way because they got rid of their sopranos writer he he left but they took so long that he came back which is good because the writing was really good in that show uh okay back to this he said uh we've actually made those tough calls I, I, God, I want, I'm dying to know what they were. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've not been public about it. He didn't name names today either. You have to look at everything you're making you, uh, that you believe in, and you have to take a position that good is not good enough. That would be everything you've produced outside of Guardians of the Galaxy, and that was just good. It wasn't great. Um, and by the way, which is their only movie last year, Correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, you know other people have said this too, but the only movie last year that turned somewhat of a profit that they released in 2023. Uh, you have to basically strive for perfection. <laughs> You're a long way from it, buddy. I would go for uh, the saying we have here, progress, not, per uh, not perfection, except for them it's uh, progressivism, uh, not perfection. Uh, he said during an investor uh, Q&A, Disney has had some misfires. At the box, you don't say. Misfires, is that what you would call them? I'd call them disasters, but okay. 
at the box office, including areas where it's dominated for years, like animation and superhero fare. But it's been four years. Time, for one, long drought for Hollywood. So mm -hmm. since 2019, it's been four years. Four years, they have not been completely back. Four fucking years. And uh, and that's because of a strike. That's because of their reaction to COVID. Even though they were allowed to work through COVID, they still managed to use it as an excuse. It's kind of weird. Kind of strange. Uh, including uh, Disney had some misfires, blah, blah, blah. With activists, if they just said with activists and left it there, that would be your problem. But they're, gonna, they're talking mm -hmm. about Nelson Peltz. The activist invents, uh, investors who are using as, I would say the activist fighting investors... Uh, are using as one cudgel as they push to get their outside candidates onto the Disney board. A lot of people think it's audience. And then in parentheses, superhero fatigue. No, I yeah. mean, yes, there's superhero fatigue because you have superhero fatigue. Uh, it's not audience fatigue. It's woke Hollywood fatigue. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not audience fatigue. No, it's not. It's woke Hollywood fatigue. Uh, there are great films, and if you uh, build it great, they will come. He noted that he had made uh, nearly, uh, he noted they made $30 billion on 33 films, which were, again, four years ago. What have you done for me lately? We've got to return to something akin to that. Oh, you mean making good stuff and being successful? Well, uh, good luck, Bob, because all you did was systematically destroy what was successful, Star Wars and Marvel, and you have shown... You've shown no ability at all. But later on, he talks about, um, in this article, he talks about sitting down, by the way, I don't believe this for one fucking second, but he talks about, and, and, and I have said a lot that none of these executives watch their own shit. They don't. Yeah. They fucking don't. They have meetings. They go to golf. They go, uh, fuck their mistress. Uh, and then fuck their other mistress, and then they go home to their wife and ignore her, and they play golf, and uh, that's what they fucking do. They don't watch their shit. Bob Iger in this article says he sits down with the creatives, and and believe me, no creative is going to like this, and watches the movie four and five times and then gives them notes. The Weatherman. I, 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 I don't even believe that. I, uh, look, a lot of these executives, when they reach certain levels, they don't even read the screenplays for the movies that they're responsible for. They'll read the coverage, which is... They get some young intern or someone at a low level to read the script and write the coverage, which is a one page summary of what happens in the script. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I see the chat saying, so superhero fatigue is a chicken or egg thing. It just mm -hmm. is because one, uh, if somebody puts out a banger superhero movie and it does successful, then, then, People will say there isn't superhero fatigue. Uh, mm -hmm. But, and then the other people will say, well, there's too many bad superhero movies. So it's not superhero fatigue. It's bad movie fatigue. But the truth of the matter is it's brand damage to superheroes, which is unfortunate because Hollywood made superheroes into a, into a genre when they are a medium with multiple genres within it. So it's a, it's a very, it's a fun debate to have. It is. It's a fun debate to have, but like the reality is superhero movies are on their way out. Do you want to call it fatigue? Sure. That's okay. They're on their way out. They are not the market driver. They have not been the market driver for a couple of years now, and they're on their way out. So even if a good one comes in and does successful, it's not going to make it the market driver. Uh, there has been the occasional good Western over the last 20 years. There has. Yeah. Yeah. But like the Western's not back. Now, I right. think it might be working its way back. I think that's actually a thing, uh, whether you like him or not. Taylor Sheridan has brought the Western back. Um, and the musical's not back, although a musical won uh, a Best Picture, you know, the last few years. But the musical's not back. And not at all. But the musical used to be the, one of the biggest, the biggest thing in Hollywood. So, you know, again, chicken or egg, we can argue it. But the superhero film has had its day. We can certainly say that. It's had its day. Everybody's admitting it now. Uh, and right. when you when you release a Madam Web and a, a Echo and a Marvel's back-to-back, -back, it certainly doesn't fucking help. Uh, and Aquaman, too. Sorry, go on, Chris. 
it's not like those were like home runs. I mean, come on. This was like, you know, the, this was like the, and the rest in the beginning of the Gilligan's Island, uh, you know, title sequence. It's like, oh yeah. And then there's, and the rest or these other superheroes. I, I thought like after end game and then, you know, uh, it just felt like, well, that was fine. And, and now that's good. That's an era. It's a great 10 years of superhero films. I thought that was fantastic. The era of Marvel, but because they're not fun and, and the best thing would have been to go away for a couple of years, maybe reinvent it or just tell another corner of the Marvel universe, or like many have suggested, just do the fantastic four and the X-Men in the sixties. And I think you and as were talking about yesterday, just do the Avengers from the sixties. I mean, that's when the Avengers, you know, began, right? Like that would be so cool to see a sixties era. Then you're not dealing with modernity or um, even like modern tech, which gets annoying. Every modern film has to explain away. Oh, my cell battery's gone. So I can't solve this problem that would be easily solved. If I had my phone um, before we move on, I know we're going to move on to soups. There is a, Photo that leaked on X.com that I think we that I think X-ray girl needs to share. I put it in the chat. I just said need to show this. And this is for Gary. This is what Gary is gonna dress like when he does his review of the American Society of Magical Negroes. This is we have yeah, I gotta share this, uh, X-ray girl. Yes. Uh <laughs> I'm, I working, crown I'm working too. on my crown. <laughs> Look at all the bling. Oh my God, that necklace. Oh my God. That's right. That's all going to be, uh, I don't, what's the height? I don't know about gold. I don't wear gold. Can you, can 18 you get karat gold? Every, <laughs> what's can the you get nice everyone gold? on FNT to dress like that for that episode? Sure. Can you encourage it? Uh, encourage it? No, they're going to have to do it. So, uh, you know. 20 bucks. 20, 20 bucks. bucks. There you go. Get it. Oh we'll, my god! Well, Ryan could just wear his Black Panther outfit, right? Can yeah, just yeah. Well, Ryan can wear his Black Panther costume. That's fine. So but everyone uh, else, we got to get the soups just to, to follow up. Uh, oh fuck! I forgot my point now. God. Oh oh, De De when Deadpool three comes out, uh, all the shield critics are going to go. There's no superhero fatigue. There's no superhero fatigue. Look at the. Th okay, it, it it it's the prime example of superhero fatigue. It's it's uh hey, I, it's going to be interesting. It might be fun. It's a massive gimmick. Uh, but you, you know, when superhero fatigue sets in, when you can't do a solo superhero movie, when you can't right. just have Superman be the only superhero in his movie and it be successful, right. you know, people are pointing out that the Batman is a sign that there isn't superhero fatigue. I would argue, I, I wasn't convinced. I, I think a Batman movie should make a billion dollars. Yeah. I think a Batman movie should make a billion dollars and it didn't, uh, it did yeah. pretty well. Uh, two thirds a decent movie. Uh, yep. but um, great soundtrack, great soundtrack. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's when you have to go full on gimmick. That that's that's when there's fatigue in the comic books, right? And they usually use those events to kind of reset everything. So why would it be any different for film? It's not. Just the same I, as it wasn't any different when they went into the all new, all different Marvel and completely killed a fucking industry. Same things happening right. in the film. They repeated the exact same mistakes. And I'm a sucker for that when it comes to comics, especially when George Perez is doing the, well, the yeah. illustrations. I am and too. Like oh, I love it. I but, love it. But it's we're like, talking about it in the context of thousands of comics, thousands of stories. Right. This is 33 movies. Yeah. It's, it's entirely different. Uh, now they're, you know, they're going to like pull out all the stops and, you know, seeing Tobey Maguire with Hugh Jackman, that's going to be fucking cool. Who said that? Of course, that's going to be cool. But does it, mm -hmm. does that fix the problem? No, no. It's a stop gap. If anything, Josh Kelsey has dropped 1999. Doesn't say anything like he usually does. Thank you very much. Josh uh, Hob Hobberad for $20. Hey, Gary. I sent you an email a few days ago about a custom bookshelf for your Doctor Who collection. Just wanted to check on whether you have seen it. Uh, I have not seen it. I think Mrs. Neurotic seen it. I would love to talk to you about that. Uh, so I will respond today. I need a custom bookshelf. I, we were just talking, Mrs. Neurotic and I were just talking about getting more bookshelves because right now I have books on the floor in my uh, research room. 
that's actually a closet. But uh, <laughs> Angela Richter has gifted five Nerdrotic memberships for $25. Hail, thank you very much. Yeah. Andre C28 for $49.99 says, how to make a good film? Hire woke writers and make characters lame and gay. Uh, that's A. B, hire good writers and source material uh, and use the source material from a franchise. Or C, filed bankruptcy and call it quits. D, smash that keyboard with eyes closed until the script is finished. Well, D would be better than A. D would be better than A. But I would have to say it's B. And you know what? I love how like companies are hiring Sweet Baby Inc., when you could talk to Drinker and you probably just fucking buy him some booze and he will give you better advice uh, for your entire industry in a half an hour than that uh, Sweet Baby Inc. would do in their entire lifetime. Drinker just did a, a video, or maybe it just sort of turned up in my feed, about how to write a book. Yeah. It was it's like simple, basic. But look, my advice with anything is really simple. Nobody writes a book. Nobody makes a movie. What you do is you do you break that project down into tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces. So yep. you write 500 or a thousand words a day. Now you do that every day for a couple of months. Then you have a book, but you've thought about it. I mean, it's, you've thought about it so much that you know what's coming next. And, and you, you need just, that time to think that time to think is so important. Yes. Take going a walk, go to the gym, the shower, you know, Walk two miles to the gym. I got the ending to my video today. Wow. Well, that's, yeah, I know. So that's, that's me up. That. Oh, you heard that. That's me upping my workout. I, I'm like, <laughs> you know, my gym is only two miles away. I'm not going to drive there anymore. That's freaking gay. So I'm walking to the gym now and back. But um, you can listen to something. I, I know. And I got, came up with the a, end of my video today on that walk back. I'm like, <gasps> bing, there it is. Woohoo. Uh, Peter Garombi. For 50 Canadian pesos says, I just came uh, over from side scrollers. Hail, Stutter and Craig. And Stutter and Craig said he is trying to buy back uh, Screw Attack now that Rooster Teeth, who owns uh, Screw Attack, got shut down today. Would it be possible to invite Craig on MTV to get a word out? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going to, uh, I think Craig's coming out to Vegas, right? So uh, Craig's coming out to Vegas. We'll talk to him. Uh, does he need to do that, though? I mean, like, I hope he does. If that's what he wants to do, I hope he does. And maybe he's got a chance to do it. And he knows far more about it than I do. I just know when a company gets a hold of an IP, they just don't like to get rid of them. Talk talk to Michael J. Straczynski about Babylon 5. Uh, arg, arg, another name. Two parts for $20. For, uh, so one thing I think people lose sight of with Sweet Baby Inc. is the role that uh, social media being controlled by ide ideologues had. True. Very good point. A lot of politicians, journalists, and executives didn't realize how much their social media was being manipulated, so it made things like cancel culture seem more real. I totally agree. I will disagree with the fact that the politicians were unaware how long, how much social media was being manipulated. They were fully aware. Fully aware. They were manipulating yes. it, if anything. They, uh, the Twitter files exposed that, that, that politicians, uh, Adam Schiff was telling people to pull tweets of people with like 10 followers that were critical of him. By the way, vote for Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey, basically, by the way, if you look at the votes, they're like, it's neck and neck, Adam Schiff and Steve Garvey. So he'll be, this was just the primary. So when the election happens in November, but Steve Garvey, you look at the votes, it's very, very close by a hair. Very popular guy in San Diego and LA. I like Steve Garvey. I love Steve hair. Garvey. Steve Garvey yeah. gave San Diego its best sports moment ever, ever. That walk-off home run against the Cubs in the, in the NLCS. Holy shit, that was awesome. I was there. I was there. Wow. Uh, Trish Page for $5. Hey, Chris, what was the quote from, uh, is it Sun Tzu? Uh, the victim Sun Tzu. quote, I'm going to make that a bumper sticker. See you guys in Vegas. So stoked. I don't think he made that's, that quote. It's not from Sun Tzu. <laughs> it's something else. But it's, um, if you choose to be a victim, you become your own oppressor. You become your own oppressor. So this is why I look at this whole victim culture. It's just like, look, we all have things happen to us where we could couch or like Kirsten Dunst. She, she basically made it sound like she was the victim of some sort of low-key low bullying on the set of Spider-Man because they called her girly girl. Like anyone can make the choice to be a victim. But if you do... I believe like you become weak. Yep. So I don't want to be 
looked on as weak. I don't want to even be, I don't want to be weak in my life. I want to be strong in the things I do and stuff happens to me all the time. I'm like, whatever, you know, just like let it roll off and it's not a big deal. Move on. And I, and I kind of mark my accomplishments with like, you know, I did a children's book called celebrities poop. I made a movie called attack of the doc. I've written four volumes of a book called the ultimate film festival survival guide. I did a movie. Called, I've done, I've done things where there's physical evidence in the world that exists. And I've, I've done shit, a lot of different projects in different realms. Right. And, you know, I could sit there and just wallow in victimhood. It is such a weak way of doing everything. And this generation that's reveling and celebrating victimhood is the worst lesson you could possibly teach to a new generation. And that's why this next project I'm doing, my, my whole point is, because I had a real theme and a thread and a point to Attack of the Doc. Yes, it's about G4. It's about more than that. And this next doc, different point that I'm trying to make. There's a different theme that I'm trying to get across, which ties into to this, which is you make your own destiny. You, you choose, you hire yourself. Corporate America, this is, this is what's always been my fight. And Gary, I know you low key, you may have not articulated it, but you're a very anti-corporate guy. Very anti-corporate. Very. And you've worked for corporations. So yes. you see the rot. Mm -hmm. I have also done the same. So you kind of see, and although there's some good, like in terms of work efficiency, like, oh, that's an interesting thing to do. I might use that in my business, but I'm going to do it differently. So it's not so effing corporate. And that is the big battle. I think that's the battle that's happening right now because no corporation, we talked about it yesterday on Real BBC, they're not going to save you. That whole thing where they laid off all those Google employees in the middle of that, that meeting. That was so, that's such a funny video. It's ridiculous, but it just shows like the corporations never have your back. Only you, you got to have that personal accountability. That's not being taught. It's not even a part of the regular culture now where it's something we all accept. Did, did nobody and think to get fucking a little suspicious to see all these corporations that are in competition with each other, embrace the same ideology, embrace ideology that's antithetical to their business. Nobody thought that was even no. the slightest bit suspicious. Well, I'm currently reading Viv Vivek Ramaswamy's book, Woke Inc., which came out a couple years ago. But he, the main, I'm not done with the book, but the main takeaway, about a third of the way through, is that corporate America uses wokeness and social justice as a way to deflect from all the horrible, horrible stuff things they, they do. do. Horrible stuff yes. they do, laws they break. Like it's sort of like, look how good we are while they're screwing over their employees or, or, or doing just awful things. And that's, that's, they love it. Wall street loves it. Corporations love it. It's a way to that, the whole thing of like Bob Iger, that, that clip that, that leaked where he's talking about, look how great we are. We made black Panther F you dude. Those who preach F the you. most have the most to hide as our friend Jeremy says. Jeremy, great Jeremy. Uh, no sign about no sound bites allowed for 1999. It was fantastic to speak with you on Monday. Oh, what's up, man? Uh, the Sharp Club with Larry Sharp. The cancellations at Sweet Baby Crash remind me of our conversation on cultural Marxism and academic indoctrination. Yeah, we hit on it was right. You know, the Sweet Baby Ink stuff was out there. I didn't see it until after we did that. By the way, it was on Larry Sharp on Monday. That was really cool. Had a good time. It was great meeting you. Awesome. Vapor Trails for $9.99 says, listening to Cat Williams go on a three-hour Forbidden Frontier rant on Joe. I know. It's it was a, so good. <laughs> it, it's good, but um, I'm not stoned, so it's really hard. To, like, that is straight up. That was a stoner conversation. That, that's all that was, and and nothing wrong with it. Uh, made me wonder, when is Gary going to be on Rogan? Pfft. I don't know. Uh, it is 100% inevitable. I don't know about that. So why hasn't it happened yet? Well, I can say, well, no, I can't. There's the possibility, I'm not, not going to be on Joe Rogan, that I might be on something on Monday. Oh, can you, Ooh. all right. Is it going to be a no. big show? Y yes. Is it called yes. Normal World? No, no. I was on, no. I was on Normal World <laughs> with Alan yesterday, Alan Ng. He was in Dallas, no. I wasn't. I'm going on with somebody else, so I can't, I can't, I really can't say her. I'm totally bored. Oh, dang, guys. man. I, oh, I, okay. I hate doing that, but uh, there's your tease. It's, it's oh, okay. you saw that. I've talked to you about it. Yes, yeah. Let everybody know, though, on social media. Oh, as soon as I'm allowed to. When it's yes, totally. yes, yeah. yes. It's awesome. That is really cool. 
Uh, War Van Eagle TV for ten dollars. My favorite thing is to <laughs> see Gary trying to talk while Chris filibusters. Now, Chris filibusters, man. That's 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 what he does. <laughs> Filibuster. I just talk too much. I, so do I. I mean, I'm not filibuster. I just You're not talk. filibuster. No, it's don't don't. don't. Usually, I'm finding my point while I'm talking. And <laughs> same here. Oh my God, boomerangs! I love no, it. no. It's like when Chris and I start talking, we don't know where we're going to end. It's a, it's a journey, you know. It's like really, it's there's a point out there somewhere, and we'll get, get there. <laughs> it's about the journey, not the end. Yeah. Enjoy all of you, Gary. If I was still in San Antonio working for the Spurs, I'd get you free tickets, but not for Pride Night. Oh well, thanks. I have not been to this. I actually went to downtown twice. Those are my first two times in the last month or so, and one of them was to see Dune Part 2. Sweet. I'd go to a Spurs game, sure. Sure. I'm not the biggest NBA fan in the world, but uh, but thanks for the offer. You know who I'm yeah, going to see in Vegas? You know who I'm going to see in Vegas? You know who I'm going to see in what, Vegas? What? what? S- Scorpions. Oh, sweet. So at, nice. during the meetup week, uh, they're playing Saturday night, so going to see the Scorpions. All right. Oh, All right, that good. is basketball. No, it's a it's a heavy metal band. Oh, <laughs> um, from the eighties. They're all probably in their eighties. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> oh my god, I feel so embarrassed. Now. It's all right. I mean, it well, was kind of a you know. Kind of sounds like a team name. Uh, it, you know what? It would be a better team name than like the Guardians. Or the commanders. Or the commanders. Yeah. Command. What a, what a lame name. I know. Uh, or the, uh, come on, sorry. The Texans, Houston Texans. Oh, did you see that that meme that went around of there? It's a black, no, an Indian guy wearing a shirt that's red. Oh, the Caucasians. Yeah, I've seen it. That's that's, been, that's an old okay. meme. I'll, I'll let you know this. I bought shirts for myself, Dante, and Alan, and we're all gonna wear them and go out. Oh, dude, I'll okay, get a shirt and we can wear them in Vegas. <laughs> let's wear them in Vegas. We'll let's wear them in Vegas. Like I'll Caucasian. get that. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy X Drummer for 50 uh, Martian pesos. Greetings from Poland. I have a new dream, a four to five hour cut of Denis Villeneuve's Dune in IMAX format on 4K Blu-ray. They might. Yes. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they released part one and two back to back. I Like that would be smart. I, I would do it later this year, too. I would do it this you can, year. You can pre-order the part two. 4K right now, no release date, but it's available for. They, he has to put deleted scenes on it. This whole thing, there are deleted scenes. They're pretty inconsequential for part <laughs> one. But just give me the deleted scenes. Uh, so, oh, no, oh god, not oh happening. Gosh. X-ray uh, girl it, something. wants an Asian version. It says Coke Asian. Uh, Coke, but you know how I say Coke Asian. Yeah. Coke Asian. <laughs> Wait, I, I'll I'll put it in the because. Ch- yeah, you should get this shirt, or Mark should at least get this shirt. Uh, nothing new right out of the Reverend Jesse King of Grifters Jackson playbook, says Io, for 10 British pounds. Exactly. Exactly. It's 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 an old trick. It's an old trick. Uh, I think AAA game industry is heading towards Hollywood's position twice as fast. Personally, they can't keep this shit up for very long, seeing that as they are burning money twice as fast as movies, Emperor... Em- Imperator, 93 for $10. You're right, because uh, Hollywood is no longer nimble, and that's one of the... There's a lot of problems that have led to it being post-Hollywood. The biggest one is pissing off your your money. But one of the other problems is they're just not nimble. They cannot, cannot, as Chris likes to say, pivot. They do not like to pivot. They can't pivot. And you're right, AAA gaming cannot pivot. No way of fucking hell. Uh, Joseph Dots for nine ninety nine. How about the authority essentially fighting grape culture? Yeah, Grand Wazoo forty two for ten British pounds or euro. Sorry, some associate from a company which stands for diversity and inclusion tried to cancel a guy from Brazil because he made a list to inform people. Pure cynicism. Yes, the Grizzy for $10. The culture of hypersensitive is why I'm hopeful for the Henry Cavill Warhammer series. It's the kind of masculine, angry, violent uh, energy we need. I just hope Amazon doesn't screw it up. Pulp Morton, I agree. Molten for $10. Hail all. I super chatted on FNT last week, and it's Pulp Morton. Mortum. Mortum. 
It's Pulp Morton, not Morton. Well, hey, hey we, we're dumb. Uh, Gary, reviewing sci-fi uh, pulps and just hit 50 subs yesterday. Excellent. Congrats. Uh, thought I'd share the tiny milestone with you all. Cheers. Well, congratulations. Well done. Well done. Lord J for $10. How's the wall taste, girly girl? <laughs> Ouch! Ouch! (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit, that was good. Uh, Epic Might for $10. (laughs) People that are passionate about and actual fans of... What's up, Epic Mike? Of superheroes Um, can make stories that fans will flock to them. Fatigue is because studios are lazy and won't let actual creatives create. Yes. I mean, the fatigue, like, I I don't think fatigue is the right answer. I think it's right. done. I think it's just fucking done. There'll be outliers, but Hollywood's already looking in another direction. And I've already told the story. Bruce, Cam- I saw Bruce Campbell in 2019 do a Q&A before Evil Dead 2 at the Castro Theater, which was amazing. And somebody asked him if he would do superhero movies. And he's all, no. And as a matter of fact, producers can't wait to be done with them. They can't wait. And, and it, it showed, especially post-2019, it really showed that there wasn't a desire to make anything good. Uh, and they didn't, give, they didn't give a crap about you. They took you for granted. Madam Web is the ultimate slap in the face. They're like, let's just slap th- this, a title on this and call it a superhero film when it wasn't even that. It shows how little respect Tom Rothman has for you as a fan and Hollywood. Um, but it's a bigger problem than superheroes. It goes way beyond superheroes because there's... Is 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 it Star Wars fatigue or is it Star Wars is fucking dead? Star Wars is dead. Well, it's, maybe it's just something as simple as meatloaf for dinner. You know what I mean? It's like I, I actually personally like meatloaf, but if you eat it for dinner every night, maybe you kind of get you get tired of it. Yeah, maybe that's superheroes. Uh, Kirsten, Dun- Kirsten D is a victim because she has nothing left for of her career and now she needs to be part of relevancy. This is true through upholding the Hollywood tradition of victims and abuse of women. Yeah, it's a holdover for me too. Mm. Uh, Kayla for $10. You are absolutely correct. Where am I? I'll get over there. Here we go. Uh, Jesse George for five Canadian pesos. Hey, Gary, I'm planning on watching Doctor Who for the first time. I would like to know how many seasons should I watch of New Who before it gets to shit? Uh, I would go eight, eight, eight. Oh, I mean, the episodes I just watched were so good, by the way. The best place to stop would be the 50th anniversary. You would be missing out Capaldi. There are some gems, but that has the best ending. Uh, But I would say you're okay with with eight. And that's where I would start. I would start with New Who and then go back to Classic Who. Because, like, New Who, like, you'll know if you like it. And if you, and you will, you'll go back to Classic Who, which is fantastic. Utterly fantastic. Uh, I was just going over there. There was a time when Doctor Who was good. I was just talking about this yesterday. And, I, and, you know, I will tweet it today. Asylum of the Daleks, which is in seven season. It's season seven with Matt Smith. It's a choppy season, but that was the opener, and it was a fucking banger, right? And uh, it, it, there's a scene where a potential companion, put your ear muffs on, X-Ray Girl. Oh, I, I know. Is this the episode you guys were talking about yesterday? You're talking about yesterday, where they where they oh. chop, they chop up a beautiful girl oh. and make her into a fucking Dalek. It's fucking horrifying. It's creepy. It's, it's creepy hell. as hell, and it's one of the best oh scenes God. in Doctor Who. And it's a scene they won't do because it's violence to women. This is Dude. why the sensitivity read, yeah. and all this filtering is such nonsense. This it's is why. Such, it, uh, this it, is why uh, Russell T Davies saying like, uh, uh, you know, like. Uh, th- never mind. Go on. It just puts these dumb guardrails on storytelling. And the whole thing is you should have no limits. Now, obviously, you evaluate your ideas, like maybe not do this, whatever. But it should be a free-for-all in terms of the writer's room. We've heard so many cases of people, you know, being afraid to say the wrong thing. You know, e- in a writer's room, you, sh- you should be able to free to express ideas, including bad ideas where you don't end up using them. But, but like the fact that now ideas are going to be evaluated based on like, well, this 
person we can't have any violence against because of X. It's stupid. It's too many stupid. Rules. Yeah, it, too it many is. rules. It, too many rules. Davros being taken out of his wheelchair. So you might as well take the Daleks out of their little uh, their capsule because they were humans at one time. They're a genetically created race uh, that now look like a you know kind of cephalopod, big eye. Uh, Brujo for five Australian dollars. I'm in a supermarket now, and these guys are so late. The milk carton I just grabbed has Gary and Chris on the cartoon. Oh, on the carton. <laughs> And cartoon. Uh, Big Raj, thank you for the dollar ninety nine super sticker. We appreciate you. Andrew Matthews, thank you for the two British pounds. Says happy birthday, Mark. Happy birthday, Mark, by the way. Yeah, his 40th. 40th birthday. Holy crap. The age of uh I not enlightenment. Um midlife crisis. Uh peace or utter destruction for a dollar ninety nine. Say something nice about Star Trek five. Uh, I like Star Trek five. Why wouldn't I say row, something? row, row your boat? Is yeah. it, that's that one, yeah. Why does God need a spaceship? Yeah, that that's actually kind of a cool thing at the end, that part. But it yeah. was a little weird with it, Spock with his jet boots. That uh, was, was uh, Uhura yeah. being naked, doing a little oh, dance. Right. Yeah. Oh? Well, she, it's a silhouette, but. Oh, okay. Uh, Eric K for $2. Happy birthday to Mark the Cyborg. Blabs Yay. the Tower Tard for $2. Is there... If there is an ARC near you, that is the best. ARC. Uh, Corey Wilson for two dollars worked for Goodwill. Just another retail job, in my opinion. There you go, uh, Matthew. I like, yeah. What do you expect? Uh, Matthew Hammond for four ninety nine. AI Alex Jones reading Lord of the Rings gets better every time I watch it. Oh yeah, we got to watch it, but we don't have time today. Uh, get woke, go broke for ten dollars. Don't mind me. I'm just here to say. Uh, I don't know what that oh, means. Oh, it's it's fuck work backwards. Fuck Disney. Hello, my lady oh. X-ray girl. Hello. <laughs> Took a second. Uh, heard it here. X-ray girl likes it right in her face. Is that what you said? Oh yeah, someone's gonna. I clip did. That. I did say that. Make sure to clip it. Unfortunately. Oh boy. Philip Butler for a dollar ninety nine. This is dangerous for groups they claim to help. Yes. Game Genie for $5, Major League Baseball, the show. Save me $70 by going woke. Vote with your wallet. Women don't buy sports games. This is all DEI grift. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, actually true. I don't like sports games either. Yeah. How many women buy the show? I don't know. What's the percentage? One? Yeah. One <laughs> percent? And they bought it for their husband? <laughs> the PC... Uh, 1996 for on Streamlabs side for five dollars. Intimacy coordinator. What the fuck is that fucking shit? Yes, it's it's real. It's a real thing. Uh, Derek PG Beller for four ninety nine. DM'd you on X. Made a short video about how as a casual Picard season two woke me up to the modern Hollywood garbage. Gave you and some others a fond shout out. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, that oof, season two was bad. Uh, rated M one ninety nine odd. Haven't seen it yet, but Zack Snyder is on ro what? No, what? Zack Snyder's on is Rogan. Is it a new episode? I haven't checked. Let me check. Let me uh, check. Oh, I'm watching I, I, that. I heard the he's back on YouTube, right? He's back because I watched. Yes, the he's back Rufo, on YouTube. The Christopher Rufo interview, I think, was yesterday or whatever. Oh. I, I watched that. Was interesting. It was really interesting. Uh, Game Genie for two dollars. BlackRock has oh, maybe it's coming up. Uh, has brand or brain damage? Both, but they admitted. Well, they have to. When, when you're a publicly traded company, especially when I guess you're an investing company, uh, that's why Disney had to. If there's any problems, any potential problems with your investments, they have to be public about it. Now they word it like, well, you know, there might be some problems with our brand due to our policies because. But they basically word it as. Yeah, but they're all bigots, you know? So, you know, the, uh, lots of angry robots for five British pounds. Nerdrotic shouting, Gary, how long ago did you move in? Fix your suit up, gantry for fuck's sake. Sort your life out. Love you all. Especially sex pay girl. <laughs> how long ago did I move in what? Texas? <laughs> it's been two years. You ever moved uh, an entire family? You're not, you're not, you're not done not unpacking. 
for a decade. Okay. I was yeah. going to say, I'm still not done moving. <laughs> yeah. Eric K for $2. Bustin makes Gary feel good. It does. Uh, wow. Coop's Girl 07 for $5. Screen Rant is reporting Rings of Power Season 2 will release, release sometime in the summer. I'm looking forward to y'all tearing it into a bunghole. Is is that true? Well, we heard this year. I, I question that. I question that. Because we haven't seen a single production photo. No teaser. We don't even know what the fucking cast is. We the know it's, it's all being directed by women this season, though. So that'll that'll make everything better. To her credit, one of the women uh, directed Shogun, which I'm going to watch the third episode tonight. Came out yesterday. Shogun is pretty good. Watch Doom Part 2 today. Fantastic film. Funniest part of the showing was the trailer for Halo Season 2 before. No, Gorb, they showed that. Oof. Thank you, Gorbs. Uh, BLVP2145 for $4.99. Friday Night Tights live stream from Bucky's. Maybe. Someday. Nick Brony for $1.99. Dan is not gay. He has relationships with women and sex with men. <laughs> <laughs> golden nuggets for five british pounds in the spirit of humanity can i get an f for the golden uh nuggets in the chat i, I might have misread that a little bit uh careful nuggets nuggets now i'm canceled uh-oh no i mean you could say nuggies nuggies That's what hassan's mom makes them when he's ripping off other people's content. Uh, would you, uh, would love to see Quinn on FNT. He is a great dude, says Eloth for five. I don't know if he'd come on, to be honest with you. Uh, golden Nuggets for two British pounds. Sweeney and my magical pee-pee grows. Okay. Oh, Sydney Sweeney. All right, that's fine. Is it magical? <laughs> some Harry Potter jokes Maybe there. to some people. Negan Jack Napier for five Canadian pesos. With the F4 casting mostly comic accurate, Will uh, Disney cast MCU X-Men the same? No. In skin color to top priority. Keep up the amazing videos, guys. They are like, the X-Men isn't even in the planning stages. So the earliest we'll get an X-Men movie is 20... 2026, maybe? That's what I was going to say. Aurora Uplinks for $2. Watching this inspires me to make my own films. Good. Eric K for $5. I heard... A, at Manowar 665, the neighbor of the beast and Abigail will be singing uh, a Hanson duet at Vegas. Oh, oh, we got to break out the karaoke machine. Let's make that happen. Gorbs for five British pounds. I swear, if Iger says we're going to focus on quality over quantity one more fucking time. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, animated Andy for four, four pounds and one pence. Holly weird, not worth saving. Just make my own stuff. Uh, they're starting to under, just watch my next video. I found an article. It's pretty grim. Aurora Uplinks for $2. I will help Rian Johnson make Star Wars movies. Uh, yeah, why don't you make them and he doesn't? Why don't you just go, okay, go go make your Knives Out movies that that make uh, dumb progressives feel smart. And uh, yeah. Uh, Callum Lyall for five Australian dollars. Chris, shut the shut up about Godzilla versus Kong or don't see it at all. And screw you for calling me dumb. I call you dumb. You're I'm, well, I'm definitely going to see it. I mean, I plan to see it. I just, every time I see that trailer, I feel like an idiot. It looks stupid. Yeah, so. it, it doesn't look like a good movie, but enjoy it. It's okay. I like dumb movies. I'm dumb. I, I can't, I just think that like in, in, you know, the shadow of Godzilla minus one, I think it's kind of not the direction. It's embarrassing. I would it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's uh, John embarrassing. Gibson for four ninety nine. Long live the eighty four Padres. Hail R I P Tony Gwynn. That's why I didn't miss him. Uh, Callum Laya for two Australian dollars. Just say you hate me, Chris. It's okay. <laughs> Big All worm right. for five dollars. Animation Vault needs to be monetized so I can super thanks him. Uh, All right, he's not monetized. Yeah. Oh, he should be Keep now. Keep supporting him then. Albawa yeah. Cinema for. 500 Martian pesos. Hey, Chris, big group, big fan and filmmaker from Kenya. We are cooking some African sci-fi fantasy for your wonderful Ooh. people. Hell yeah. That'd hey, be cool. Send it to me. Send Inge it to me. Inject some common sense on the Streamlabs side for $5. Orlando and former tickets for the Ju June 6th and 7th go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. They are limited. Jar Jar was not responsible for Alias, by the way. Get your shit right. He was responsible for Alias, though. Like he he produced it. I believe he wrote a lot of it too. 
Uh, but what's Orlando Informer? What is that? Mm-hmm. Inject some common sense. What is that? I'll have to look it up. Uh, Rook takes Rook. Thank you for the five dollars. Lego. Uh, thank you for the donation. Lego Fifth Doctor for four ninety nine. Is the forerunner to Sweet Baby Inc. the company that, uh, that came in to improve the real Ghostbusters? Oh, maybe. Uh, Kaloth for four dollars. Star Trek Five. What does Hollywood need with an audience? I know. <laughs> uh, nine and a twenty-three. Five dollars. Hello, gentlemen. Currently suffering in L.A., but I'm in the market for comics and was curious if you knew any shops in the area. First time chatting, Chris. Uh, comic shops. You're looking at Comics Paradise in Pasadena. There's another one called Comics Factory on Colorado. Um, those are the two that I know in my neighborhood. There you go. Hello, everyone. Uh, one turn off already for uh for me for Deadpool three was the TVA. The TVA storyline holds back everything. Good. Single main character of superhero adventure. Love you all. Keep up the good work. I agree. Ronzilla for nine ninety nine. Taker six ten for five dollars. Gary, did you see the Furiosa trailer? Yes. It says her Odyssey. Then it zooms out to say only that her. And then the, oh, and I died of cringe. I did see that, the Hero's Journey. And they had to put Mad Max in the title, even though he's not even in the movie. Yeah, a Mad Max tale or something. It's pretty stupid. A Mad Max tale. And it looks, it doesn't look good. Like, And then it was like, say her name. Like, what the, what are they talking about? It's. It, I think I, that, I, you know, remember when people were fighting back when, when, when this was early days. Okay. So it's understandable, I guess. But when uh fury road came out and a couple of people were calling it feminist propaganda, people were going, they're actually calling this feminist propaganda. Can you believe it? Well, how's that played out? <laughs> Cause now it is this fucking yeah. confirms it. Uh, so yeah, they were right. Gary, if you were uh, advanced sci-fi levels, would you ever consider getting cybernetic eyes maybe just one uh to try out if you can't get much worse says rook takes rook for five dollars if i was about to go blind maybe but it'd have to be solid state nothing wi-fi nothing ai nothing yeah but there is a thing that can fix it called glaucoma surgery it's just i don't want to pay for it and i can see good enough Anthony Barlow for $2. Thank you. Uh, default name for $5. Speaking of dumb movies, Ace Ventura and Deadly Ground were released 30 years ago this month. Damn. Yeah, I love Ace Ventura. And that's the last one. Couldn't make them. You couldn't make You, you Ace couldn't. Ventura. No. It would never pass your fucking, what was that, sensitivity reading? Yeah. Or Austin Powers or any oh, comedy. Oh, such a good movie. Though. Or the Hangover movies. None of those movies could get me. I just feel like Hollywood has to stop listening to the 300 loud people on Twitter that make it appear as if a, a, a lot of people think this way. I don't think it's true. I think it's a loud minority. And I think what you need to do as a company, have a backbone, stop listening to the loud minority and look at the facts, look at the data. The data is how much money did your project make? How many eyeballs, how many people watched it? What are the ratings? Get back to those being the only metrics that matter and companies like Sweet Baby Inc. take advantage of people's, they, they, they weight uh, things on, that happen on social media much more than the things that actually matter, which is how much money did it make? How many people watched it? Those are the only things that matter. All this stuff of like, look at this, it's trending on Twitter. There are like 6,000 people. 6,000 people is nothing. Yeah. 6,000 people is nothing. The United States has what? 330 million. I think every day it's like an extra million people. Right. Come, right. Come, you know, <laughs> ah, yes. Yes. To, to come in here to vote and get $10,000 gift cards from the mayor of New York city. But, um, <laughs> what, an up thing. what an up that thing that's happening to our country anyways. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I think that that's what you have to look at is just, you have to be kind of unemotional about th- those kinds of decisions rather than being swayed by someone who takes the marketing team for coffee and frightens them with that people are going to say things on Twitter. I think what where we've reached, and this was started, I think, with a bunch of things happening, but a lot of it was like Elon Musk saying F you, you know? When he said F you in that speech. Yes. Like, it was just like F you. You know, you look like you're doing good when you're actually doing evil. 
And I think that now that that inspired a lot of people say, yeah, why are we listening to this minority of people who are morons? I think, I think that the, the, the tolerance for this is look, I'm very tolerant. I, I love all sorts of different people. I take people at face value, whatever, but at a certain point, I'm not going to be bullied. It's ridiculous. Right. And that's what it turned into is horrible bullying. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm not affected by it. Certain words just don't matter anymore. Call me up and down every day. It doesn't matter. No, so, actually, I, I, I like a good yeah. scrap once in a while. Well, it can be fun every once in a while, but yeah. I try to temper it with humor. Yeah. You, but the you problem do. is people Share are too stupid to understand Guess humor. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. Uh, uh, they don't. And uh, right. that's not our fucking problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> it right. really isn't. Uh, I right. don't, I don't give a crap. Um, Hey, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine because Kotaku has come out to defend sweet baby ink and set the record straight. Kotaku everyone. So go back to your homes. Nothing to see here. Sweet baby ink doesn't do what, you, what gamers think it does. According to fucking Kotaku Get the fuck out of here. That's what we're going to end the show. <laughs> what a fucking bunch of horrible that, that'll straighten everything out shit uh chris what do you got coming up hollywood on the rocks with alan ing in about uh well less than an hour he is in austin texas right now for south by southwest we're going to talk about what movies are playing at south by southwest we're going to talk about um a little preview of our oscars watch party which is happening Ooh. this Sunday. Gary will be on. I know you've got Forbidden Frontiers, so I know you're going to join late. Uh, but come on late. When's As it actually got a tuxedo, it starts at 3 p.m. Pacific time because they moved the Oscars Five. up one hour. They did. Maybe oh. they did. Maybe I can move Forbidden Frontiers. Well, we ha that's our 50th episode. And it we kind of got a... We, and we, have a yes. we have Mike Barra coming on from yeah. Ancient we Aliens. A, so, but, And, and so uh, Sunday, many other things. He's written a Sunday. We'll have a full house. We've been making videos for the last couple months to show it's as will be there. Kira Lynn. I'll pop in Alan, of as soon as I can. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I'll, I'll send you the invite and everything, but it's so our Oscars watch party is this Sunday. Today we're talking Oscars. So join me. In I, I was late last time. And like Dante had already had like 20 edibles and everybody was drunk. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was fun. Uh, it was fun. I mean, it was fun. Uh, it was fun. No, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun thing. You know, we do our normal thing at Film Fred, so join us. That's awesome. That's cool. Uh, what do you got coming up, X Ray Girl? Uh, I'm probably gonna be joining Mark for his birthday stream. Oh, um, grift off that age. Uh, yeah, the big four zero guys. He's That's actually a big one. middle aged now. Um, and uh, Mark we'll Mark ju Mark just day. hit the wall. <laughs> Yeah. Mark at the wall. How does it taste, honey? Oh, no. <laughs> he's crawling. Whoopsies. Oh, no. <laughs> Welcome to the wall, Mark. Um, but I also have a stream 9 p.m. Eastern with Tugs on Poor Choices. And we're just going to be talking about uh, silly things women do in life, which is a lot. And and sometimes men. Sometimes Tell men. me about it. Right. Yeah. But I find it's a lot of women, at least publicly. I think that's the thing. We always talk about it too much. I'm saying generalization. We as a women. So yeah, I'm over there. Right on. Hey, thanks to the uh, over 9,000 people who joined us today. Thank you very much. Thanks to the Mod Rotics. Thanks to everyone who left Super Chat donation. Give yourselves a hand. And all the lurkers out there, we'll be back next yeah. Wednesday for another Nooner. I'm going to work on a video that'll be out tomorrow. That'll be out tomorrow. And uh, as soon as I can tell you guys what uh, is possibly going down on Monday, I will let you know. Friday Night Tights with the Soska Sisters, Forbidden Frontier with Mike Barra. It is our 50th episode. Can't How believe it's 50 yes. freaking episodes. I think I'm guesting on George's uh, stream Sunday. It's going to be busy. Oh, yeah. And I'm I, I'm supposed oh to be un God. unsubscribed on Saturday. Oh, my. Dude, you're. You got a busy week. Been, oh, my goodness. Yeah. When are you going to have time to do your million subscriber uh, celebration? Well, I had got to get there first. <laughs> you oh, you're nine thousand away. I checked. It's oh. very close. It's gonna happen soon. I believe it. Or the end of this month, hundred percent. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll celebrate in Vegas, man. We'll celebrate. In All Vegas. right. That's but what you we'll got to get that plaque. Oh, I'll get the plaque. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I got the I hundred thousand one, and uh, Perry has the one for uh, daily. I sent it to him. Nice. So yeah, 
Nice. Can't wait to get it. Uh, And thanks, everyone. Hail to the fellowship. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Ciao, ciao.